Vip is unlike any tool you've used before. It's not another AI prototyping tool. It can actually build real functional apps with real backends, real APIs, integrate them all with third-party services and deploying to your own cloud. Let's take a look at what you can do with it. You start from a prompt, just type what you want to build and send it to Leap and you start building. If you're unsure what to build, hit surprise me. You'll get an example that you can try. Here's one for a real-time chat application. That could be fun. It uses streaming APIs based on the awkward TS framework that powers the backend. Let's start building this. So now we're in the Leap main UI. And as you can see, it started using AI to generate the code. This is currently based on Cloud4 along with Gemini 2.5 Pro. While it's doing some code in here, I can walk you through some of the main features. As you can see, when it's doing code changes, you get diffs, as you would expect. So you can make sure that the changes are exactly what you want to see. When you want to follow up and make more changes and continue building using prompts, you can scope to specific files or services by selecting them here in the scope context menu. This makes sure that you send in exactly the the right context to the AI, which means you use fewer tokens. And it also means you can limit your changes to specific files if, if you're sure where you want to change the file. But do use it with care. Uh, if you scope too much, the AI won't have context of the rest of the application and may make changes which are incompatible and cause regressions. All right, so our, our first app is complete here. We can see it here in the preview. Let's enter the username. Here we go. So I'm, I'm connecting where I can send my messages here. I guess I open this in a separate window. I can join with another handle. I can send the messages here and you can see that they, they show up here. So it's working, it's real time. And does it is using Encore's TSS real-time streaming APIs. And Encore TS, if you don't know, it's an open source backend framework that has over 10,000 stars on GitHub. And the, the key feature of it is declarative infrastructure. Basically, if we take a look at the code here, you can see that you can directly in application code, use the framework to define, here's an API endpoint, which we defined here by importing the API function. If let's say we wanted to store these messages in a database, all we need to do is basically promptly to do that, store messages, let's use a Postgres database, and then built into the Encore TS framework as the declarative infrastructure. So you can see it here is importing the SQL database from the SQL DB package. And it's defining where the migration needs are. And this is, you know, defined as so an object in code that other parts of the application can use. And once it's ready, we can have this reload and we can see that it works. And we'll also see here on the, the infrastructure tab, we'll see that the database will be visible here. So now it's rebuilding our app and there we go. Our database is here and looking at the architecture, we can see this is our backend service, the chat service. It has too many points and it you know, has eight database called chat. So all is good and it's working. And if we wanted to deploy this, we could hit deploy here and you can see it now, it's now telling me to merge my change before deploying. So let's talk about what that means. In Leap, when you're working in a chat like this, that's similar to branch. So once you're happy with your work, you can merge it. And that's, think of that as merging a pull request. And what happens in practice is that your context is optimized. So all of your chat history over there it won't be used the next time you prompt and start a new change, which means you use fewer tokens, which is obviously what you want to do. So you get further with, with less tokens and less cost. And if we now go back to the deploy model, we can see we can now deploy our app. So Leap is integrated with Encore Cloud, which is a cloud automation platform specifically designed for the Encore framework. So if we hit deploy here, it's now started a uh, deploy. We can go over here to Encore Cloud Platform and in just a second, we'll get deploy logs and we'll see the provisional the infrastructure we actually need for this application. So that's setting up serverless compute and setting up our database. And there we go. And it's starting with the build. And then I'll do the provisioning step and then the release. And we can follow it through here as well. And as you can see, I didn't create an account to do anything. As I said, it's integrated with Leap and you get a free development hosting environment built in. And then once you have something you actually want to deploy, maybe for real and, and make sure you have a database in your own cloud, you can connect your AWS and GCP accounts through here. And then the deployment experience is exactly the same. You basically hit deploy and Hongkong Cloud manages the orchestration of the infrastructure you need. So that's the main features. A few other call-outs to make is there's a two-way GitHub integration. So if you wanted to keep working on your app outside of Leap, you can create a 
repo just by creating your connecting your GitHub account and creating it from here. And now we can see that my code has been synced to this repo here, and I could go on this and keep working in cursor or my favorite ID, and then I could use the local Encore tooling, the Encore CLI. I could go into Encore them and install the CLI from here, and I could use that to deploy my application using the same Encore Cloud integration, or I could simply pull my changes back into Leap. Whenever you push to this repo now, Leap will detect that and will ask if you want to pull in the changes. You can pull in the changes here and then just deploy through here. That's the main things about Leap that you should know. I hope you give it a try. Have a lot of fun.